right, so let's get into the notation, terminology, recommendations. Notation. All right, so here's an example of a notation. Slow tempo, three colon, one colon, two. What the heck does that mean? Right? Well, number one, let's talk about what we all know as professionals that doesn't happen. Those numbers are seconds, like as in one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand seconds, as opposed to what our clients think they are, which are mild suggestions of how fast they can actually count one, two, three, one, 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 two, right? Like that's what how most people do this stuff, but these tempo markings are supposed to be seconds per phase, right? Now, number position 312 corresponds, each number position corresponds to the phase of contraction. And that order is always eccentric, isometric, concentric. Now, some of you guys are thinking, well, why is he putting eccentric first? And which one's which? Blah, 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 blah. Well, in functional activity, for the most part, we start off with some sort of loading. Right? So even if I was going to take a jump shot, before I take a jump shot, what do I do? I dip, right? Like I do some sort of eccentric loading to kind of load my system before I do the concentric, the lifting portion of that activity. That's how most functional activities work. That's not how all exercise works. It does work on something like a squat. When you guys do a, a barbell back squat, what do you do? Eccentric first, the lowering. Then you have the isometric phase at the bottom. You know, are you going to hold at the bottom? Is there going to be some sort of pause between the eccentric and concentric? And then you have the concentric, the way up. Bench press, same thing, right? You lift it off the rack, down, which is the eccentric, and then up for the concentric. This only gets a little confusing when we start talking about things like lat pulldowns, right? What, what phase do we start off with lat pulldowns? The concentric, right? We pull two, three, and then we're slowly letting it back up. That's the eccentric. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, well, why don't you just switch it around for the lat pull down? Because that's going to create a potential point of error in your note taking. You need to be consistent with your notes so that you always know what tempo markings you are using. And if you stay with eccentric, isometric, concentric, you won't get into that confusion of, wait, did I mean a two-second eccentric or a two-second concentric? You'll know just because the numbers are in order and they're always in the same order. And then you can flip them around based on what the person is doing, what exercise the person is doing. Just so we're clear too, chances are once you pick a tempo for a routine, it's going to be the same tempo for all of the exercises in that routine. It's not going to be that confusing. You could literally write your tempo marking at the top of your routine or template for the day and you'd be fine. All right, so some more tempo terminology. Um, now I chose these uh, definitions kind of based on what's in the research, right? So to give you guys some general guidelines, what is a slow tempo? So a slow tempo is generally speaking five second or longer repetitions, right? So we could go, I was doing curls, down, two, three, hold, up two down two three right like that would be a slower repetition tempo moderate tempos are like that in between so like up two down two up two like that's more of like a moderate tempo so we're talking two to four seconds per rep and then fast is anything less than two seconds per repetition that's not two seconds per phase that's literally the full like i'm literally doing curls and each full curl is taking less than two seconds. Now, we get into some tricky things here. Maximum voluntary concentric tempo. This ended up being one of the largest points in the, the literature review that I was doing where I learned something very interesting. All right, so this max V thing is going to come up as we go through this lecture, but a maximum velocity concentric contraction is the fastest you can lift something. But we need to differentiate this from power. This is the fastest you can lift. It doesn't include a quick pre-stretch. It does not include the intent to throw. 
or leave the ground. It's literally the fastest you could lift a weight. So you guys could think of a maximum voluntary concentric tempo as the fastest you could get up out of the bottom position during a heavy back squat. Right? So you're just going to go as fast as you can. Now that's different than an explosive tempo. An explosive tempo, which we're going to talk about a lot with power exercise, includes a quick pre-stretch, so some sort of quick load, right? Includes a quick pre-stretch, has to have the shortest possible amortization phase possible. Amortization phase is the period between the eccentric pre-stretch and the concentric explosion. That has, period has to be super, super, super small. And explosive tempos have to have an intent to throw, release a weight, or leave the ground. Everybody cool with that? Can everybody kind of see the difference between a maximum voluntary concentric tempo, how fast can I lift, versus an explosive tempo, how fast can I like jump? Right, those are the differences. And then you guys can see that little, that little one at the end there. What does a plus mean? On my notes, I just added a plus sign if it meant or longer. You can do this tempo or longer. So you can do two seconds or two plus would be two seconds or longer. All right. Work versus volume. This became really important as I was going through the research to try to figure out how to create recommendations. I had to create some terminology around the difference between the number of reps somebody did and the amount of time their muscles were under tension. So work has a, is actually a, a word used in physics that involves how essentially much force did you use to move something a particular distance. So it's just weight times distance essentially, right? I'm, I'm, I'm oversimplifying a bit if any of you guys are physics majors out there, but essentially it's work is reps times load. All right. So if I do 10 reps of curls with 20 pounds, whether I use a fast tempo or a slow tempo, if I do 10 reps at 20 pounds, the work is the same. Does that make sense? It's 10 reps. Okay, great. But I needed another term because what happens in the research is you start realizing that time under tension. So if I did do those 10 curls at a slower tempo, obviously I was lifting for a longer period of time. All right, let's say I, you know, we're comparing a one, one tempo up for one, down for one for 10 reps. I'm under tension for 20 seconds versus a three, one, two tempo which is a slow tempo. So a three second eccentric hold at the bottom and then up for two, right? That three, one, two tempo versus the one, one tempo, obviously I did three times the amount of time under tension. I was, I, I, I had that weight in my hand three times as long as I did the, the one, one tempo, but the work was the same. Can you guys get where my problem came in? And the research shows that these things are different. There is a difference between those two things, right? More of what I'm calling volume, the amount of time you're under tension versus work, volume plays a big role in a lot of our goals, despite the fact that work might be the same. So here's an interesting one for you. You figure after a couple months of work, doing this literature review, setting up this course, creating all this stuff, getting it accredited, which we were talking about at the beginning of the call, I'd want you to think repetition and tempo was really important. Newsflash, it's not. It's only important for a couple goals. And as I discussed with you guys at the beginning of this lecture, like my big thing is accuracy. And we're going to end up creating courses for all of the acute variables. So the last thing I would want to do is paint a picture that you guys should be focusing on a acute variable with clients and using their, their mental energy and their motivation to focus on something that maybe was not as important. So 
Repetition tempo is a secondary concern for most goals. What's a larger concern is volume and load for most goals. So activation exercise, endurance. Hold on here a second, guys. Hypertrophy and functional goals. All of these goals, chances are repetition is secondary, meaning it could help, for example, to increase our volume. But at the end of the day, as long as the volume is there, you could probably use several repetition tempos and the outcome would be the same. Now there is two times when repetition tempo does become a big deal. Dictating slower tempos to somebody trying to perform max lifts is a bad idea. Kind of makes sense, right? You're lifting as heavy as you can. The last thing you would want to do is go, hey, can you slow down for me? <laughs> right? If they're doing a one rep max lift, they need to just lift. The other thing, and I'm going to get into this a little bit because this is a pet peeve of mine, is if you want power, you want to increase your velocity. You want to increase how high you can jump, how fast you can sprint, how hard you can throw. Explosive tempo is the only answer. And when I say explosive tempo, we obviously discussed there is a very specific definition around that. It can't just be a, well, I lifted really fast on the concentric. That's not explosive. All right, so all of this stuff I just told you makes things a little bit more complicated and a lot and a little bit more simple at the same time. Okay. So if you guys look at this recommendation table, this repetition tempo table, and please feel free to screenshot this. Like these slides are set up so that you guys can easily screenshot all of this. But if you look at endurance, hypertrophy, and functional strength, and even activation exercise to a certain degree, if you said, hey, I'm going to use a 2-2 two, two max V tempo, you'd be right for all of them. It's fun. This is why I was talking to you guys. How important is repetition tempo? It ends up, eh. for a lot of goals, it's not that important. Like as long as you have a pretty decent eccentric to keep your volume up and you're working on these max V, you know, you're lifting with as much force as you can, you, you, chances are you're in good shape. Now I did write down what are some of the most influential variables and we're going to go over that in this right-handed column. And the reason I did that is so you guys could kind of see like, okay, he's talking about repetition tempo, but he keeps saying that repetition tempo may not be that important. Um, what is important for that particular goal? And that's why I wrote that in there for you. So you guys can see that these tempos are pretty similar for activation exercises, endurance, hypertrophy, and functional strength. Max strength is actually really, really simple. It's a self-selected tempo. I mean, volitional zero max V, Trust me, people were going to go as hard as they possibly could on the concentric anyway. So putting max V there is kind of redundant. It's just self-paced. And then power again, and I'm going to get into this a little later, is explosive. It has to be explosive. There is no alternative. 